What's up, guys, and welcome back to another episode here on CNR TV. On it's this episode, it has been a while. On this episode, we are starting back with Moon Knight, episode one. It's been a while since we've been here. Josh is a new pop. His uh, his little man was born. Um, what's what's his name? Shepard. So Shepard is going to be joining us on the next episode. No, I'm just kidding. But anyway, guys. <laughs> anyway, guys, uh, we're going to do like we've always done uh, on this show, where we. Uh, we watch the recap together, and then we will come back at the end of it, and we will share our thoughts on it. So, without further ado, we're going to jump into the recap, okay? Oscar Isaac is burning the candle at both ends in Moon Knight. And not just because his character, Mark Spector, has disassociative identity disorder. He serves multiple narrative purposes in the Disney Plus series that also introduces us to a new Marvel hero. As Mark Spector, Isaac gets to be the badass mercenary and superhero Moon Knight. But as Stephen Grant, one of Mark's alternate personalities, Isaac gets to be the audience's surrogate. He is our entry into this new chapter in the MCU that has very little connective tissue to anything even remotely of injury. Judging by the first episode, Moon Knight is not the profane romp that comic book readers may have anticipated from the mercenary who serves a moon god. Our day in the life of Stephen Grant starts with him cheerfully chirping at his neighbors. Hey mate, still selling the old brushes and brooms, right? Before heading off to work at the National Gallery in London's Strathlagar Square. His boss, Donna, insults everything about him from his knowledge of Egyptian mythology to his flirting skills. Something is off, however. Another coworker, Dylan, asks if they are still on for their date Friday, but he doesn't remember asking her out. The uneasy feeling only grows when despite a meticulous nighttime routine, he wakes up in Germany. It's not difficult to see why Stephen thinks he's dreaming. He's surrounded by poppies, his jaw is broken, a gold scarab is in his pocket, and people are shooting at him. The cold open introduces us to Arthur in the middle of a self-flagellation ritual that ended with him putting glass shards in his sandals. Arthur performs a ritual to their goddess, Amit, and then kills one of his followers on the spot. Arthur's guards inform him that they've been ambushed and lost the scarab, which leads him to discover Stephen in the crowd, who he believes to be the mercenary. Stephen doesn't want trouble and tries to give the scarab to Arthur, but his body resists. Someone else seems to take control. Stephen blacks out and wakes up covered in blood, seemingly having killed the guards. Eventually, Stephen disassociates from the chase entirely, he wakes up in bed, safe in his ankle restraints. While the tape on the door is undisturbed, his fish now has two fins, and he's two days late for his date. He's been asleep for three days. Back at his flat, he pokes around and finds a secret compartment with the key to a storage unit and a flip phone, with missed calls from a woman named Layla. She calls again, and when Stephen answers, Layla claims that she has been trying to reach him for months. She also calls him Mark and claims to recognize Stephen's voice, but not the accent. Speaking of the accent, it's at this moment that a voice speaks to Stephen. Stephen. This, as far as we know, is Mark Spector. Mark warns Stephen to stop before he gets himself in trouble. The lights start flickering. An intimidating figure who looks like he's wearing a sleep no more mask chases Stephen down the hall. Comic readers know that this is Khonshu, the Egyptian god of the moon. Once again, he blacks out and wakes up somewhere else, 
this time on the bus outside of Tottenham Court Road Station, and once again pursued by Arthur Darrow. Stephen makes it to the museum, but Arthur is right behind him, and is allowed in by the various followers on the museum staff. Arthur explains that he's only trying to use the justice of Amit to rid the world of past, present, and future evil by any means possible. As Stephen could probably tell you, Amit was an Egyptian deity known as the Devourer of the Dead. Arthur uses his cane to judge Stephen, but Amit does not give a definitive reading. There's chaos in you. Stephen tries to go back to work, but the lights go out, and Stephen is attacked by wolves that resemble Egyptian jackals. Arthur demands over the museum's PA system that Stephen give him the scarab. He finds refuge in the bathroom and sees Mark Spector clearly in the mirror on either side of him for the first time. Stephen freezes while Mark paces back and forth, reflecting an infinite number of times behind him. Mark calmly and coolly tells Stephen that this is real, this is happening, and to give him control so he can get them out of there safely. Stephen relinquishes control to Mark who then summons a white suit of armor that materializes around his body, shoulders first, like he's getting strapped into a roller coaster. Well, there you have it. Episode oh, one of Moon Knight. So good. So good. So, first off, let's lead with, based off of the Disney Plus uh, shows that we've seen thus far, where would you rate this as the first episode? Uh, comparing first episode to first episode of every season or every show, I would say this is number one so far. I agree. I agree. One of the things that um, that stood out to me is a different approach to the superhero film. Um, this is the first time we've seen a character that initially uh, presents as weak and and timid, and you know, more. It almost seems like he would be the character that would be the comic relief of the show. Right. But he he really is ultimately. The hero of the film. Well, he is, and he isn't. I mean, well, true. Kind of As Stephen is. Grant, he is not. Right. <laughs> As Mark Spector, he is. Right. Now, here's my question: uh, Who is the original personality? Has he always had this condition? I'm suspecting no. Uh, and I think we'll find that out quickly. But just. I thought, like, I think Mark Spector might be the main character, for lack of a better word. Or main personality. Right. And then perhaps when he got the Moon Knight powers, it created a, a sub-personality. Yeah, and, you know, based on what Layla said when he finally talked to her on the phone, and based on a lot of other things that, like, anything where it's, you know, uh, required him to have any kind of backbone or or charisma that's happened, Stevens had nothing to do with that. <laughs> right. So exactly. what you have is, and I think, of course, you know, we're, we're going to find out more about the Mark, Mark Spector side of the character. But I think what Mark Spector is doing is using Stephen Grant as like a, a, a secret identity to hide. I think it's intentional. Yeah, I think it's intentional because, um, you know, anything, t anytime, from what I've gathered, anytime something exciting has happened, Stevens had nothing to do with it. From asking the uh, Dylan out from the, you know, to, uh, you know, fighting and getting the scarab in Germany. Um, yeah, that, that's interesting. 
thing because a lot is happening when Mark is in control. But, and Stephen has no recollection. He he knew something was up because he was waking up every day tired. And well, he also said the comment that he felt like he'd been hit by a bus every time he wakes up. <laughs> right. Because Mark is out there fighting and kicking ass. Yeah, fighting supernatural creatures. So one of the other things that I wanted to bring up was um, uh, uh, the bad guy, Ethan Hawke's character, um, author, author uh, Darrow or Barrow. Barrow. I, and um, I did a little bit of research. I'm, I'm going to be completely honest with you on this uh, character. I didn't really know who Moon Knight was I coming know. into this. I know very, very little. And so that required me to do more research because I wanted to, you know, I wanted to have some kind of knowledge on the character. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Arthur's character in the comic books um, was a really nefarious individual. And he was a doctor who worked for the Nazis. In Auschwitz. In Auschwitz. Yeah. So, you know, and he was into the occult and all that stuff, which kind of it kind of loosely ties into what he's doing now. I don't know if that's the direction they're going to take that character or that's going to be the history of the character. It seems like they're really branching out from this comic book. So. But his comic book character is also very little happen. Like I think that's his one and only appearance. That's, I did read an article that said that they were surprised that he was one of the the bad guys in in the series because his participation in the past has been very minuscule you know where he he really hasn't um he wasn't a very uh broad character well that's kind of perfect for the mcu honestly they've changed so many characters and they've changed big characters so that's true it makes sense just to have a little nobody that you can turn into that is true. So, this is this is falling in line with the Disney Plus um, take and MCU take on on these characters. Because I, I guess you could go and nitpick all the little aspects of everything we've seen so far. Sure. You know, if you're so you're either a hardcore comic book fan or you're you know like me, where I enjoy it all, but most of my exposure to Marvel has been through the MCU. Yeah. So I've I've done a lot of research on the comics, but I've never been one to purchase comics or anything. <laughs> so I know a lot about it through other means. <laughs> well let me ask you this. I'm kind of jumping a little further ahead here. Um I've always been surprised when they introduce like uh, the bad guys, you know, for lack of a better word, at how embedded these groups are into everyday society. Yeah. And and this one is ridiculous. I mean, like everybody on that bus scene, every every person on there apparently, or they made you feel like was part of this cult, this oh, Amit oh, oh. cult. Also, all the guards in the uh, in the museum. It's, uh, right, like they're yeah. they're weaved into every single aspect of daily life. I'm glad you mentioned that because one of my complaints with the NCU is a lot of stuff feels like this big threat, and it's it's always been there, and you're just supposed to accept it. But them being like a cult with this Egyptian thing that is so hidden from the public it actually makes it feel bigger than it, it is that's true like it, it you know like it could have always been. it it kind of lends back to uh, and i can't remember what they were called in uh falcon and winter soldier the group the um Nathan thing. yeah um it, i the hope that smashers. the what was it flag smashers yeah the flag smashers so I hope they don't do the same thing that they did with the Flag Smashers where they build it all up and then at the end they were just, they were nothing. They were no threat, you know? Right. right. And, uh, but moving a little further ahead, I want to I wanna approach this. Um, there's the scene where Arthur 
and Steven are inside the museum closer to the end of the, of the uh, show. And he judges Steven, right, with his cane and the whole thing. And he gets, he doesn't get a definitive answer from Ahmed, right. like on the, the scales on his arm. He makes a statement that I think a lot of people might have missed. And I, I want your take on this. He says, I sent or I sense, or there's a lot of chaos in you. Yeah. Okay, with with that word chaos, and we know we know from the, the past that um, Marvel does nothing unintentionally. <laughs> so the fun. the word chaos has I've only heard it one other time when it was describing the type of magic that Scarlet Witch uses. Yeah. So I'm wondering. So th this got my my gears turning. And I'm wondering if what they've just done is told us that the overall power that's happening within this Amit and the gods and all this stuff, uh, if this is, this is, uh, because we know there's no gods in, the, in Marvel, no real gods, you know, everything yeah. that has ever been referred to as a god, Thor, for instance, is right. truly a space alien or... Somebody like the Eternals. Right. The Celestials so, are the only thing that would be close to being a god. And so, with, with that in mind, and the fact that they said there's chaos in you, I'm wondering if Moon Knight gets his power from chaos magic. What are your thoughts on that? That's a really good point, because I had the same thought. Um, and I'm interpreting it two different ways. Either that's a subtle hint that i mean if you look at the suit just kind of comes around his body it seems very magical um, so you have that element of it but then i'm thinking it could mean chaos and the fact that he can't judge him because it doesn't know which personality to judge like it could be a case of mark specter has done a lot of bad a lot of bad to come and then stephen grant could have a been a good person. Yeah, he's just so innocent that, you know... God doesn't know how to judge. Cause it's, he doesn't have it in him to fight or anything of that nature. Right. So, so, I don't know. I'm kind of leaning toward the... It, you're, you have chaotic... Uh, like a chaotic mind. Your your brain is scrambled, you know. Right. I, yeah. I don't know. I kind of hope the magic element does, because that would rob the magic element of the MCU. Well, we know that the Disney Plus series are placeholders between MCU major releases, right? So, what we're getting next is um, Doctor Strange. I can't wait. I can't wait either, man. And I, I think with the, the Spider-Man setup and, you know, um, Loki and all this stuff that's happened previously, that Moon Knight is there to maybe dot some I's and cross some T's to set up what's going to happen with Doctor Strange. And we've from the trailers we've seen on Doctor Strange, it's going to be epic. Huge. Now, I hope so. I keep hearing the, uh, the phrase that there, it's not heavily connected to the MCU thrown around. Uh, so this could be kind of a film enclosed into the potentially. Well, this is a whole separate phase from, like, the Avengers and stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah, but in a in a more condensed thing. I bet it would, uh, it's a door open to the more um, dark side, if you will, of MCU. So, like, you can introduce Blade with Moon Knight. Right. Because you could have, like, you have Egyptian monsters. You could have, like, Werewolf by Night. Who's an True. MCU. True. Uh, that... so you can introduce all the supernatural. That's the word of element. This is a perfect doorway for that. Well, that that'll be interesting to see where they they go with that because, you know, are they really going to introduce a whole new realm of possibilities to what creates superheroes right. through you know through this character? And here's one that I really thought about a lot. Is what we saw happen real, or is this all happening in Steven's mind? I'm glad you asked that, because <laughs> the whole thing could be some delusion. Like the whole suit could be fake. You 
you know, and it's like every bit of it could be fake in some way. I'm really hoping it's not, <laughs> but it makes you wonder. Yeah, I was trying to wrap my head around the whole uh, Stevens telling him this is real, you know, in the right. in the bathroom at the final fight with the the whatever it's called, the Egyptian wolf or whatever, yeah. jackal. He tells Stephen, and he appears to be separate from Stephen in the mirrors, right? And he's like, this is real. It's <laughs> happening. And if you don't give me control of the body, then we're both, you know, everybody's going to die. Well, right, but then, like, not to uh, speak anything ill, but, like, a schizophrenic, you know, their right? voices could say this is real, and it certainly is so it could be something you know, on that level. The way, the way they ended that um, episode two with uh, Moon Knight walking in towards the camera after killing this jackal, that was probably one of the best endings we've seen thus far. At least it was the best introduction of the main character. Exactly. It's the perfect build up to seeing him in costume. Yeah. Well, what do you think of the costume, by the way? I think it's fitting with what we know about Moon Knight. It looks kind of like the like the mummy wrappings, yeah, at, which is Egyptian, and which is it, also different from the comic. Like he doesn't have the wrapping. It's always been more like a, a white, sleek body suit. Right. But, uh, I, it's growing on me. At first, I didn't really care for the mummy look, but it, it's definitely growing on me. Yeah, it's kind of like the body part seemed like a mummy wrappings coming around him, and but then the the face and the hood and all that was very superhero, you know. <laughs> and I like that his face is completely covered. It, it adds uh, uh, like a mysterious element to it, even though that that brings up a good point on my whole chaos theory. We know that the MCU is is well known and Marvel is well known for using color to represent power right well if my theory is right and it's chaos magic chaos magic is what red and purple yeah. depending on yeah. depending on who's using it. yeah on who's using it well his eyes were bright blue which yeah. doesn't necessarily really mean white. anything they might have been white they were very very bright I want to say they're white. And there was no no red trails, no anything of that nature. So that might blow my theory out of the water, but it'll be interesting to find out. Say, so what do you think Khonshu? Is he a real Egyptian god? Is he an alien? What do you think? So I, I think that's in the um I think Khonshu is one side versus Ahmet side. Like, Kanchu's job is to make sure that Ahmet does not get released, right? And he's used Mark Spector to, to keep Ahmet contained. Right. And, uh, but he's not a very nice guy, <laughs> or being. <laughs> no, but I, I think that, I mean, if my theory is right, I think they're all going to turn out to be some kind of, either from a different timeline or from outer space or something of that nature yeah if, if it's not it's going to really open a can of worms you know? really yeah i mean because then you can go anywhere with it you know yeah. <laughs> well so what do you give me uh your five second uh idea of what where you think we're going next not literally uh, five seconds but yeah, I think we're going to see flashbacks of Mark unearthing uh, Ahmet accidentally. I think that might be why he got his powers to clean up his own mess. Gotcha. So I think well, I think it'll go heavily into his origin. Yeah, I think we get a whole lot more of Mark Spector in the next episode. Yeah. Do they introduce? Or have cameos of any Marvel characters going forward. Who would they use? I mean, 
There's no telling where they go from there. Yeah, I I can't imagine they would. I'm gonna say no. Okay, well I'm gonna I'm going to take the opposite stance on that. I'm gonna say we're gonna get some cameos, just because that has been the the modus operandi so far. <laughs> right. And Any uh, idea who that would be? I have no clue. Did it, maybe Blade, like you said, you know? That would be awesome. You know, I, I have heard rumblings that Blade is going to make a comeback at some point. Hey, they're definitely this, working on This would be the time to do it. In fact, we've already heard him in the movies. He was in the uh, end credit scene of Eternals. We've right. Him, so he's there somewhere. So, that, that'll be interesting, but we're just going to have to wait and see, guys. Any last thoughts before we uh, we close out? Ah, I think we did everything big. I'm just super excited for episode two. It is only six episodes. Right? It is six episodes. Uh, These are 40 minutes long, so um, it's a little better than we got it in, off, uh, you know. Um, uh, Some of them are short. For Captain Scarlet Captain Witch, Captain or what was it? Um, WandaVision, I should say. You know, we only got 24-minute episodes off of that, so so that they've uh, extended it a little bit. I was I was pleasantly surprised at the length of this one because it it they they crammed a lot in it. You know, we try to do a two-minute recap, but there was no way I could fit all that in two minutes. So, um, but and the amazing thing is, and they need all the kudos in the world is how they kept it moving without it blowing down. That it's. Like, I was literally on the edge of the couch, like leaning into the TV, because I was like, oh, "We're moving along. What's going to happen next?" And it did not. Yeah, I, I agree. Well, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised at how, how good this first episode is. Uh, I just hope they can maintain this, uh, this pace, and the interest that you know it, it's constituted. Yeah. Uh, but we'll we'll have to wait until. Uh, next Wednesday to see where they go next. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited. All right. Well, guys, we appreciate you coming by and, you know, uh, joining us on this discussion. Uh, drop a comment below on what your thoughts are. If you agree, disagree, you uh, hate our face, whatever. Or how wrong we are or how perfectly right we are. But be sure that you hit the like and the subscribe button while you're at it, too, because uh, yeah, we need to get this thing going. All right. Well, thanks, guys, for coming by. I want to see you guys on the next video. Bye.